Welcome back to the channel everyone. We are going to continue our season one of the No Dust No Worries Rogue Hearthstone Laddering Experiment. Let's hop right back into things. Um, yeah, I've actually been quite itching to get back and get back into the groove of things, do a couple more games, see uh, where it takes us. Um, so just to reiterate what the series is about, I am taking a fresh rogue account and trying to climb as high as on the as high on the ladder as possible without using any uh, expensive epic legendary or adventure cards. Um, we have hit a slight hmm, two three. Do I want to look for a one? Hmm. Two three. It's a little optimistic, but I think I'll keep it. Um, so we have hit a little bit of a roadblock because I seem to be unable to gain quests. <laughs> um, I think it might be because I just have to finish um, those uh, five practice games. But I really can't be bothered. I, I, I don't want to... One of my goals for this deck is to have every single game that I play on camera. So that everyone can see how the deck is going, how the deck is played, um, the ups and downs. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll persist for a couple more videos. We'll see how the uh, questing system goes in the next couple of days. I might just have to bite the bullet and do it um, off the camera. Or on the camera, I'll speed it up, something along those lines. <clears throat> okay, looks like we're set up pretty well. So far, okay. That definitely was a mistake. You always want to tap first. If you're gonna t if you're gonna tap, you always want to tap first in order to um, grab the card. Grab the card that you tap. Um, in order to grab the card that you tap, and 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 sometimes tapping the tapping first will get you more cards and gives you more options. If you're gonna tap anyway. Anyway, <clears throat> what should I do here? I'm, te I'm very tempted to weapon up. I could also play the Shattered Sun. Hmm. I think I'll just. I think I will play the Shattered Sun. It's um, challenged. Both these minions are challenged by the Murloc Raider, uh, but he doesn't appear to have anything else in hand. If he wouldn't have tapped, he wouldn't have coin tapped if he had a two-drop play. So I get the feeling he's playing quite. Uh, I, I get the feeling his hand is very clunky. Um, full of spells or perhaps very high cost minions. So, uh, well, either way, I think I, I like to develop minions on my board. Okay, so he did have minions. I don't know why he didn't play them last turn. That's really interesting. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. I will draw a card. I will probably backstab the the cobbled geomancer. Um, just to clear the board and um, also the Geomancer is actually it can be quite a threat if the opponent's deck runs a number of spell cards and um, if we assume our opponent knows what they're doing if you put a Geomancer in your deck you better well be running a number of spell cards and um, Geomancer actually works really well with Warlock um, increasing the damage of your mortal coil to two is is really good um any how shall i put it any card any spell okay just give me a moment um i think i will do this here we go spell power the benefit of spell power is incrementally it increases more and more as the cost of the spell goes down now mortal coil costs one mana and deals one damage to a minion giving it spell power doubles the damage to mana ratio so previously it was one to one giving it a bit of spell power is two to one so you deal two damage to one mana um, whereas say for example a fireball you you cast, you cast the fireball, you do 6 damage for 4 mana. Giving it a spell power is 7 damage for 4 mana. So uh, comparatively, the value is lower. Um, you gain more value from spell power when you, um, w when you have a lot of low-cost spells in your deck. Um, you, you gain relatively more value. <clears throat> so I'm definitely going to clear here, uh, which leads me to believe I should... I don't need to draw. I think I will just do this. Yeah, so, so sorry about the sort of my logic was running around in circles. You spell power gives you more benefit the lower cost the spell. 
Um, so if you think, take for example, cards like uh, uh, Moonfire, or was it? I think it's Moonfire, the zero cost druid card that deals one damage. Um, spell power increases the value of that card by basically infinite. <clears throat> okay, I will use my dagger again. I think I'll just, I'll just, I think I'll just develop the ogre. The other cards, whilst I could have used my turn more efficiently. Um, I think these cards are more susceptible to uh, AOE board clears. So I, I, I like to have a little bit of diversity on my board when possible. You know, a couple of small minions, a couple of middle, middle sized minions, and a big minion. Um, it makes it more difficult for the opponent to clear your board, as opposed to if you have a whole load of small minions, um, they become very uh, vulnerable to AOE board clears. <coughs> okay. Looks like he's run out of options. We should be f pretty fine to take this game and actually even up our win-loss, which will be very exciting. <laughs> yeah. I really feel that Warlock, like Rogue, can be a very hard class to learn. It, 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 Warlock has a fair amount of learning curve. Um, because often, you, you might often be tempted to tap you might often be, um, and, and that can take you too low, but sometimes you might be too afraid to tap, and, and that might be wrong also, because the whole deal with Warlock and its hero power is that you can pay life and mana to gain card advantage. And that's what that's what makes the Warlock class so cool. You can actually opt out of card draw mechanics altogether in your class. And thereby... Um, you can use that hero power to generate a lot of... Uh, well, the, the hero power has a lot of value and you can generate a lot of tempo. Okay. Excellent. We're not... Oh, ready to go. Excellent. We got some gold finally. So I'll record our win. Uh, okay, one second. Let me just do some jiggery pokery. Okay, I think it should be fixed now. Yep. So I will record our win and we will go and buy our first pack. You got enough gold to buy a car. Excellent. And we can also access the arena. Um I'd like to hear from you guys whether you'd like to see me play arena. Uh, it sort of goes against the spirit of this this ladder climb because um my arena I I have reached about 4 to 6 7 wins in arena. Um depending on quality of the deck and um you know sometimes when I'm really lucky I go 10 plus. But, you know, that's that's on a lucky day. <clears throat> but we'll see. I'll leave that for now. Let's go and buy a pack. Now, I wonder which pack I should buy. And before we decide which pack we should buy, we should look at the common cards for each of the packs that are rogue-specific. Let me just clear this out. That we may want. Because common cards are the easiest ones to get from your pack. So classic, we are looking at Eviscerate. Ringleader is okay, but I think it's mainly Eviscerate. If we go to GBG, Auto Barber is excellent. Sharp Sword is excellent. So at the moment, I think GBG is winning out. And then if we look at TGT, we have Buccaneer, Undersealy Valiant, and Shadow Pan. Actually, I really like these, this, this combination of cards. There's a lot of tools for Rogue here, and you can do a ton of work. Okay, I think I will buy a TGT back. Um, for now and let's see if we actually find anything worthwhile to such that we'd want to change our deck right, let's do this day of the most impressive jousting. I popping side show. Hmm. argent horse riding is, is nice I, I think I will put an argent horse rider into my deck because it's a very nice um, fast three drop that does a lot of work. Okay, and I think that hmm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think the Shattered Sun Cleric is fine, given I have a number of early game minions and a number of tempo plays. So I will get rid of a Razor Fen and put in an Argent Horse Rider, and we shall queue up. Well, before we do that, I will make sure that we update our deck list. Okay, and we are good to go. Let's hop back in. Let me know if there are any issues with the deck list. I think it should be fine. So let's queue up again and see if we can get to rank 19 this time. Okay, Priest. Um, immediately, I think, gives us a fair chance. Rogue does fairly well against Priest, um, particularly Dragon Priest. Although, having said that, I am missing 
a fair number of rogue cards that you would normally expect to see in a rogue deck. <clears throat> but let's see how the cookie crumbles. So, um, for future for future pack openings, oh, give me a moment. Do I want to uh, tempo this out? Because the next turn I'll be weaponing up. Yeah. Actually, if I tempo this out, next time I can weapon up, and then the turn after I can coin Yeti. Yeah, let's wait. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys um, what sort of packs you think I should be opening. Um, you saw my rationale there before. Uh, when you're first, first opening packs of your, your first, Someone say, five or f three or four packs, um, you should really focus on what is what common cards you might be looking for in your certain class and also in the... Um, in the in the whole minion pool in the minion pool as a whole which is something i didn't really do probably should have done um yeah do i clear this i think you can do so much work if i don't clear it it's quite expensive to clear it it's like a two for one but he did spend a, a power and shield on it um in my experience a, a cleric that a buff cleric that's uncontested and get and draw so many cards for a priest so I think it's worthwhile to clear it. A cleric for priests for cler sorry clerics for priests are almost like knife jugglers for paladins. Um, they enable so many plays. Okay, do I want to coin out the four or do I want to? So if I coin out the four, what is my four drop play? No, I don't want to coin out the four. Okay, because I have no four drop play afterward. Um, I think I just develop this, put it on the board. It's very sticky. It's very hard for him to deal with. He can't really shadow madness in, into anything. And if he even if he does it has a divine shield to protect it so yeah i'd love to hear you guys uh, opinions on <clears throat> um, what packs i should open uh, so you saw my rationale you know I, I thought there were a number of good rogue cards um good rogue cards in tgt but having said that um i probably do want some shredders i probably do want si7 although si7 is a rare card so i probably will end up crafting that one um, the key commons yeah. for this deck would be, let me think, hmm, probably Shredders, what else, maybe Krakens, I think TGT Krakens would be very strong in this deck, yeah, Shredders and Krakens, because I think those are the things that I'll be going for next, um, subject to everyone's, everyone's, uh, thoughts, okay, I think I, I, I'm gonna clear this, do I clear it, do I use fan or do I use my face? Hmm. Or do I just use the Storm Pike? I think I use my face and I develop the Boulder Fist. Here we go. So I'll be taking a fair amount of damage, but we are able to deal with this and develop a very strong Boulder Fist. And going into turn six, um, we have a number of heal plays and a lot, a number of options that we that we can that we can use to respond to he, whatever he plays. If given that our board can't respond, but Given if we since we have twelve damage on the board, I don't think we'll have any issues. But you never know what's going to happen. Uh, you never know if he plays a Sylvanas or anything like that. <clears throat> or say perhaps a Light Bomb would be very strong here. No, it's just a straight up death. That's fine. Um, my ogre was going to get death sooner or later, and um, forcing him to do it on turn six slows him down. So that's not too bad. And it looks like he's going to heal his face again. Um, is he playing a, a hyper control priest? I'm feeling a hyper control priest. Uh, but having said that, the hyper control priest is weak to sap, and we just picked up sap, so that is particularly useful. I think I will develop the voodoo just to heal up my yeti to take it out of. Um, well, it would have it would have only been weak to organize circle. Um, but it's general. I think I think it was a correct move just to heal it up, um, to have it ready for minion combat next turn. Since I'm pretty sure, I mean, he hasn't been playing anything for for a number of turns. I don't know what his, I don't know what his hand might be. Maybe okay. The Holy Nova's not too bad for me. He only clears two low value minions. Um, okay, smite. That's fine. Hopefully, I draw into something like a sprint. I really need to refill my hand. Uh, okay, all that. That's fine too. And he's, he's already spent one death, so... And next time I'm probably going to fan uh, Stompikes. I don't think I'll be swinging. 
Yeah, he's already used one death, which means it, it may be unlikely for him to have the second in hand. It doesn't appear that he does. We're looking okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's a uh, it's a combo deck, and he spent three cards on the Gurubashi, which means that our sap will be a three for one, well two and a half for one. It'll clear his Gurubashi and then and then nullify both the Divine Spirit and the Fire cards, so it destroys two cards. That's actually good for me because getting the Yeti buff to four attack means it's out of um, Shadow Word De Shadow Word Death range. Although he would want to death the Stormwind Champion anyways. Hmm. Okay, I think I will draw a card before I sap. See if I pull anything else out of my deck. And I think I will sap and then Hero Power. Setting up for the Deadly Poison next turn. So yeah, so that the, um, the sap play was extremely valuable there. Um, sap generally works well against buff classes. So you'll be thinking about uh, priests and uh, paladins, uh, druids to a certain extent, but not really. I think it's more likely priests and paladins when they have Valens and uh, Divine Spirit in a fire. Did we reach rank 19? Let's see here. Yeah, we did. Rank 19 and one star. Okay. Um, okay, let's do, let's do one more game. Let's do one more game. I'll record our win. And yet, yes, we are back in the green for our win-loss ratio. It's great to see that we have gone back above 50%. All right, let's Valyra. make it two in a row. Uh, Fury, I'm not sure. Okay. I would love a one-drop. Um, I would love to have some more actual one-drops in this deck. But, it, but given what we have now, I'll just keep the two twos. Um, the reason you really want to one drop against Druid is that most Druid these days are playing Darnassus Aspirant. And a say I hate say I played a Murloc Raider just then. Um, he could have either I'm not doing this anyway. And say so, say I developed a Murloc Raider in turn one, um, it would have made him either um, he could have either played his Aspirant, Coin Aspirant, or he could have coined Hero Power. And I think it's much... Coin Aspirant against a Rogue uh, isn't that strong because I could have used... Anyway, I'll explain it properly next time because it's a little bit too uh, wishy-washy at the moment. I'm trying to, I think I'm trying to shoot too high with the explanations when they're not actually relevant to the board. <clears throat> but a Coin Shade is very dangerous. Uh, especially if he's a double force sav type of druid, which he may well be. Um, Shade of Naxxramas is, is is definitely a good indicator of a double combo druid, or, or you know, single, sing, at least a single combo. I'm, I'm feeling at least a single combo, if not a double co double combo. Uh, he's thinking about revealing the shade. What does that say about his hand? What does that say about his hand? I can't be sure. I don't know. Anyway, let's just draw a card and. Keep developing. Hmm. Well, he obviously didn't want to make the shade vulnerable to my hero power. If he was, he was, he was mousing over the shade, and then mousing over my um, blood sail, which meant that he wanted oh, to obviously trade it in. Hmm. Is he going to reveal it this turn? It makes sense too, but okay, I guess not. Uh, I think I draw again. I use I use Voodoo Doctor to heal. Hey, give me a minute. Not a great heal. Actually, no, not too bad a heal because healing this um, shade kills any of these minions, but healing that off of one health means that swipe um, doesn't kill it. Swipe th does although kill my Voodoo Doctor, but um, it's still okay to, to develop some things. Okay, so he's playing defensively here. I think he's okay. He's, he's revealing. That's fine because I can sap it. Um, and I think I will want to sap. So weapon deadly, weapon deadly, or do I just develop the ogre? I don't think I can. There, there is merit to developing the ogre, but ogre gets challenged by shade hero power next turn, which is a little scary. I think that I will sap the shade and weapon deadly. Here we go. Yep. Um, and yeah, so so just as I was saying last game, uh, a card, a sap 
is really good against buff classes and, and the shade buffs itself. And often druids will innovate out a shade and just grow it over a number of turns. But if you are able to sap it back to hand, it basically is unplayable. I mean, it's not unplayable, but it, it's really, really slow to play it again. Um, it's quite weak to board clears after a certain point if you have a blade flurry, a deadly poison blade flurry or anything like that. Um, so he's forced to play defensively here. Which is good for me because I get to develop my ogre next turn, although I am running low on cards, so that is a little concerning. But we have had our prayers answered because we have a second ogre, so we have a very strong turn 8 as well. Um, yeah, he basically can't play the shade, I think he has to start playing taunts or some sort of removal, but uh, druids lack... Um, Reliable single target removal. Their best single target removal comes from, okay, that. Um, which isn't really single target removal, it's, it's used for burst. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, so it's, it's, it seems like he's sending out for double combo. There's not much I can do about it with this deck. I don't really run any annoying taunts. Um, I can just be aggressive and force him to... Uh, okay, do I swing? Do I swing? If I swing, I set him at, set him at 7. Basically, swinging now means that, means that I can add one more damage next turn using my hero power. Let's do it. Um, Here we go. I don't think he can force Sa force Savvy down because he's not at nine, and uh, even if he does, force Sav deals four, 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 two. So that's fourteen damage, and I'm I'm three off. He'll be three off doing force Sav. On even on top of that, he um. He already spent a uh, force of nature to clear. What did he clear? I can barely remember. Um, so he cleared a blood cell and he did four damage to the face. That was actually quite wasteful. Um, I definitely would have. I think he would have done. I think he would have done something else if he had the option to do something else. But I think he didn't. I think his hand is very clunky. So we will see what happens. Um, come on, pass your turn. Pass your turn. Sometimes opponents just. AFK because they can't be bothered finishing the turn, but if you just concede you can save us both Okay, no, not us both. He probably left the computer already. You can save me a load of time but That's fine because I will take the win wherever I can get it uh, Swipes Okay 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 this is a bit of Come on man what he should have done there actually was wrath for one on the ooze and and look for a card uh, because he didn't draw he could have used the wrath for, for card cycle and he might have been able to find say a taunt like a sludge belcher or, or something like that anyway i think we are almost at rank 18 but i think i'll leave it there for tonight we'll just put this up for tonight and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the amount of progress we've made tonight. Please let me know what sort of uh, packs you might like me to open. Or oh, before I forget, I'm recording a win. Yep. So we are eight to six, fifty-seven percent win rate, which is not too bad for a deck that has what two common cards in it. Um, and hopefully tomorrow we can reach maybe rank eighteen and, and start clawing away at reaching rank twenty. Um, yeah, so let me know what sort of uh, deck changes you might want to see, what sort of packs I should buy, um, if you think that uh, it might, there, might, it, there might be merit to buying uh, classic packs or uh, GVG packs. But at the moment, I think I'm going to stick to TGT until I pick up you know, Shadowpan, uh, Buccaneer, and uh, that thing, that, the, the mini, mini, mini SI7. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. I want to just take this chance to thank you guys in advance for uh, liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. Um, it means a lot to me. You know, I do this for the love and uh, it would be great for you guys to, to support me. And, uh, you know, I mm, hope you guys have a lovely day and I will see you next time. This is No Dust signing off. See you next time.